It's interesting. So the yeah, little crab goes to back to? Sort of, it feels dead. I mean, sure. It's not yeah. really responding. Or what is, what is this thing down here? The... Okay. This here is what they call a sand column. And in the matrix of this sand, there's a bunch of eggs. And this belongs to a, a certain type of snail called Linacea, commonly called a moon snail. And if we have one, uh, Anyway, so there's a bunch of eggs that are mixed in with this. And it's kind of sandy if you want to feel like you. Oh, wow. It's like, oh, like sandpaper. Like very yeah. fine yeah. sandpaper. Like almost, almost like a, it uh, feels like a, um, you know, but again, those like a fruit roll up kind of texture almost. Yeah. That's a worm. No, it's a little scaled one called Lepidonotus. And again, we get orders of this for uh, the Inver Zoology courses. It's a, it's a little worm? Yes. It's called a flat, scale flat worm. worm. Or a scale worm? A scale worm. We used to get another little worm that was a flat worm called Amphipterus, which we'd have to go out and collect this and then tear it apart and look for this little pastel orange worm called Amphipterus. But we haven't had orders. Yeah. And this one? The starfish goes back to? Oh, great. That would be What's neat about this guy here, if you look at it, you'll see a little orange dot. Most people refer to that or they think of it as an eye, but it's actually called a sieve plate. And I think that thing can filter water down to like two microns. And what it does is, this whole little thing is set up like a hydraulic unit. In the central area here, there's a tube that runs around, and then there's tubes that run off the central one down. All the little tube feet, if we hold them upside down, it will start having these little tube feet come out. But by sucking in water through that little sieve plate and then using muscular contraction, it forces water down through the tubes and down through the tube feet. And then by, again, muscular contraction stuff, it can retract those legs. So the way they move is basically hydraulics. They force water down in the tube feet, stick it on whatever they're doing, and then they retract the legs, and that's how they'll move. As you know, these things are probably the worst thing for shellfish. When these things get into a, a bed of mussels or oysters, what they'll do is they'll attach to it, and then they just start using muscular contraction, just constantly putting pressure trying to pull the animal apart. Eventually, they'll wear out the adductor muscle that's on the clam. Once they get a little opening, get the clam to open just a little bit, they actually have their stomach will extrude and go out into the other animal, secrete digestive juices, and suck up all the animal matter and then suck it all back in. Very, very unique way. But they're very devastating to shellfish populations. That's what they eat is clams, oysters, mussels, any kind of shellfish. In the past days, the fishermen used to actually take these things and they cut them up thinking they were killing them. But if any part of the central disc is attached to a leg, you can have a whole new animal. So theoretically, we could get five new animals out of this.